Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about another member of Spirochid family and they are called Leptospira. Uh, okay, so we have seen the general properties of Spirochids and we know their structure. They are having, uh, they are kind of gram negative in nature, they are spiral, they are very fragile and they are having uh, what we call endoflagella or axial filament structure. Now Leptospira is one of them and Leptospira is having a typical characteristic and we'll be looking at all of them in later uh, slides. Now in this whole different video we'll be talking about taxonomy, biological properties, epidemiology, uh, pathogenicity as well as micro detection we won't talk about, sorry, let's go back. We won't talk about detection much so let me take the floating tools here, okay, we take a color, okay. So we won't be talking about this this part. We'll be talking about treatment and prevention again. Okay, so let's begin. First is the general characteristic. Now the general characteristic is obviously they are about uh, they are uh, the spirochids. So they are having the spiral. They are having the spiral structure. Obviously in this picture we can see that they are having the spiral structure pretty clearly. But the important property is that they are having this kind of. Uh, circle or circular loop at their terminal that's the kind of unique about uh, this unique about them okay and they are also having a kind of outer envelope their kind of outer envelope and they are having endoflagellum these are the characteristic very very common to all the spirochids but especially uh, for them especially for especially for this leptospira we are seeing this kind of a spherical or loop like structure at both the terminal points and they are also very larger as you can see they are larger they are longer actually not large they are longer and if you look at the morphology they are tightly coiled, coiled spiral rods and they are long for 6 to 12 micrometer long now remember for other spirochids for like uh, tryponema we have seen they are having maximum of 10 micrometer sorry micrometer but in this case we are seeing it they can be 10, 6 to 12 even 15 micrometer in, in, in length okay they are hooked in one or both ends that's the uniqueness about them and they are actively motile so they can move from one place to another place pretty fairly but again we cannot stain them using gram stain it's actually wrong we cannot I shouldn't say cannot we can stain them but uh, they won't uh, take gram staining that much good so usually we can stain with the gram staining but they are not that good to attain that stain. So we need to use silver staining procedure and if you use silver staining procedure you will kind of find this brown in nature. So here it is the silver staining. So if you look at it in light microscopy we can find it here but it's very rare in finding light microscopy. So in those cases we need to use Fontana microscopy here we can find them brown. So you can see these are not black actually this is brown. Now using Fontana staining we can see this brown leptospira in uh, this background okay now the general characteristics of them and uh, that is they are having order spirochids family leptospirici and genus leptospira so these are something to memorize and in fact most of the things here are simply informations and i am dumping informations on you that's that's all about these characteristics and all these things you shouldn't Okay, so let's begin. Uh, for the culture, uh, we can culture them in air. Uh, that, that's why, uh, why, because they are aerobic in nature. So they require air for their growth. They require oxygen for their growth. And uh, their actual optimum temperature for their growth is almost 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. This is kind of room temperature and slightly higher than the room temperature. But if we put them uh, at higher temperature or this temperature for greater than 40 degrees, 45 degrees Celsius temperature for longer period of time, uh, say uh, 45 degrees Celsius temperature for one hour it is a kind of kill uh, it's kind of kill this kind of bacteria so they are a kind of uh, less temperature sensitive they are a kind of fragile to temperature and they can best grow in neutral pH like 7.2 to 7.4 it's a slightly basic but still it we can call it a neutral because it's almost uh, equals to 7 and if we talk about the resistance, they are having weak resistant property. If we heat them 60 degrees Celsius temperature for one minute, they will definitely die, right? And they usually exist in water or moist soil for several months. Moist soil, sorry. So they live in water as well as in moist soil for several months because they're they, in moist soil. They are getting the temperature like 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. They are also getting a kind of neutral pH like 7, and they can easily grow. 
and among all of them they are sensitive to penicillin so we can treat them again using penicillin okay now among all of them what we know about this is that there are two major species one is leptospira interrogans another one is leptospira biflexa or biflexa now among all of them, among these two leptospira interrogans is a pathogenic strain but leptospira biflexa or biflexa is a non pathogenic so our major important is to talk about this leptospira interrogans because that is of clinical importance now why and how they are causing infections because for their pathogenicity they are having antigens associated with that now what type of antigen so let me take and change the color the type of antigen that are associated are three types one is the genus specific protein antigen another one is a sero group or group specific antigen another one is a sero var specific antigen right but depending upon this type of antigen like the sero group specific antigen will target all of the same all of the member of the group all of the member of the same group genus specific antigen will target all the individuals put on the same genus of leptospiry uh, leptospider right so they are depending upon the and serovar specific antigens are very very specific they are having kind of narrow because they are uh, very specific at a particular serovar now the epidemiology caused by leptospider mainly they are a kind of zoonotic disease now what do we mean by zoonotic zoonotic diseases mean they are transmitted to humans via kind of uh, animals or having kind of animal host right now in this case they have can they are transferred uh, from different wild and uh, domesticated animals uh, to human being and usually the reservoir for this kind of uh, bacteria are rats or dogs or different farm animals right so they can be transferred from those regions and usually they can uh, they are usually transferred via breaks in the skin or intact mucous membranes so if we get mucous membrane they are pretty much vulnerable for this kind of infection even if they are intact but still they can be infected but on the other hand if your skin is getting any cut any wound or any kind of burn injuries through that injury or this cutting line they can enter into your body and once they reach your blood stream they can be transferred from one place to another place and cause and can cause infection right or sometimes they can have indirect contact contact with soil contaminated with leptospira water contaminated with leptospira and and obviously with infected urine from an animal with leptospira if it is in direct contact with you in those case it can also cause diseases but definitely it requ require a, a region of entry or a door of entry now the door of entry in this case is provided by wound by wound or any kind of injury okay now in this uh, picture it is it was demonstrated the epidemic can be demonstrated here as you can see this is the carrier adult carrier uh, it can uh, provide the urine it, it, it in, 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 in its urine in the rat urine rat uh, sorry rat urine uh, it contains leptospira uh, and if this urine is in indirect contact with human any kind of contact or if it is mixed with water or soil or mud and then a uh, human is in contact with either of this water soil and mud contaminated with this urine containing leptospira a human can catch the infection right or sometimes what we can say here uh, the acute illness uh, here say some some of the cattle is having this illness and if we take them uh, unprocessed and if we take their urinary discharges and we deal with them and, and, and if we are having any kind of contact whether direct or indirect contact with with them as a result if we are having any kind of cut or wound in our system they can easily enter or sometimes if they are introduced to our uh, mucous membrane they can have direct in, uh, entry now the what are the pathogenic substances for leptospira we have already talked about before that they are having toxins right and the toxins they have are mostly endotoxin like components these are not termed as a perfect endotoxin because it is not having the perfect or actual structure of endotoxin but it is a endotoxin like component and this endotoxin like component or ELS it is also termed as ELS this can cause fever inflammation and finally the necrosis of tissue right and they are also having so this is the first kind of uh, thing that they are using to cause infection second thing is hemolysin 
so this hemolysin as the term suggests hemolysin it is lysing our red blood cells as a result uh, we it will turn convert ourselves into a kind of anemic anemia will set place if it is going on for further longer time right and they are also having kind of cytotoxicity factors which will finally uh, kind of uh, have effect like muscle spasm and dyspnea dyspnea okay muscle spasm can be resulted using the cytotoxic factors and they are having cytopathogenic effect so the effect that we are talking about cytopathogenic effect is mostly uh, caused by viruses they are caused by viruses so th in this case the infection is a kind of virus like infection that's why we are seeing it is infecting by cytopathogenic effect and cytotoxicity factor all of these things are pretty similar like the infection caused by viruses right now cytogenic uh, cytopathogenic effect is uh, simply sensitive to heat 50 degree celsius step. so usually these are the different kind of pathogenic functions that we are seeing right but we can kill them usually they are sensitive to heat if we uh, heat them at 50 to 50 degree celsius temperature for 30 minutes they won't be killed some some of them won't be killed but if we heat them at 60 degree celsius temperature for one minute they will be killed so they are having a kind of slight heat resistivity at 50 degree celsius temperature but they can be killed at slight higher like 60 degree celsius temperature okay so i have mentioned previously that uh, 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 greater than 45 degree celsius will kill them but it's not actually right because we require so i i rectify my mistake here actually we require 60 or 65 degree celsius is approximately greater than 60 degree celsius temperature will kill them in one to five minutes actually okay so now let's talk about the pathogenesis in details so for their pathogenesis we know uh, for any uh, bacterial pathogenesis there are sequential steps steps like adhesion of the bacteria with the host cell then invasion then uh, finally the damage of the host cell and escaping their host immunity now in this case the invasiveness of this bacteria is due to adhesion obviously the mechanism is provided here this first step is the adhesion of uh, this bacteria with the host cell so if this is the bacteria and this is a host cell the so first step is this adhesion so bacteria will come and adhere to the host cell via kind of receptor uh, via kind of physical interaction then that will be endocytosed inside so here we can see it is a kind of getting inside it's a kind of getting so let me change the color for the bacteria let's say the bacteria here is red in color so let's say the bacteria is red so here we can see the bacteria is getting in inside uh, the cell now once it is getting inside the cell let us draw the cell here we go this is the cell a host cell inside where we are having a vesicle inside the vesicle we are having the bacteria now the formation of this vesicle is called the endosome right because the the vesicle is formed after the endocytosis so we call them endosome right the endosome is formed now this from this region it will induce uh, either apoptosis of the cell apoptosis apoptosis of the cell or or necrosis of the cell so they are actually fiddling around with uh, the signaling pathway inside the host cell and they will modify the pathway in such a way so that it will kill the host cell either via apoptosis or programmed cell death pathway or via tissue necrosis okay now the root of infection in this case is simply suppose this is the organism and it, it, it is finally coming into infected animal discharged with urine and then it will contaminate water or soil we have already seen all the steps let's see it again once water and soil is infected if a human is in contact with water and soil via a kind of wound in their skin they will get this bacteria in their bloodstream now after getting this bacteria in the bloodstream it will move and what it will cause is leptospirosis now the infections and disease symptoms we are going to see is called as leptospirosis right and from this leptospirosis condition uh, it is a kind of 30 percent fatal and 70 percent recoverable so most of the time it is recovered but sometimes it can be fatal and it can kill the individual 
Now the clinical type of diseases that they can cause, the, all of these things at a broad spectrum it is called as leptospirosis. Leptospirosis because it is caused by leptospira leptospirobacteria. Now the leptospirosis can have different type of symptoms like jaundice, right? Now the jaundice we are talking about are of hemorrhage type, right? So this, if this occurs, it is deadly, it is deadly. Let me tell you, it is deadly and dangerous because it is a hemorrhagic jaundice. It can cause simple influenza like typhoid type, uh, sorry, typhoid type and it can cause a kind of hemorrhagic pulmonary kind of infection. Any kind of this hemorrhagic infection can be deadly. Right? As they can have hemolysin as their virulence factor, they can have this kind of hemorrhagic jaundice or hemorrhagic uh, pulmonary infections. As you can see here, this is a kind of hemorrhagic pulmonary infection. It is kind of destroying your whole respiratory system. Right? Otherwise, it can have renal failure or meningioencephalitis type. So this is an example of meningioencephalitis. Uh, sorry, not this one. Sorry, anyways and it can cause renal failure renal failure also okay so they can have diseases but among them if they are having a hemorrhagic jaundice or hemorrhagic pulmonary infections this case will have will be fatal 30 percent of the case remember 30 percent of the case fatal but rest of the case are not that much dangerous or life threatening now sorry let us talk about Anyways, this is seven slide eight. Okay, let's talk about immunity. Now, immunity against this kind of infection is common. However, it requires time for the development of specific antibody against this infection. Right? Now, it will require almost two weeks to develop the specific antibody against this kind of leptospiral infection. Okay, and the specific antibody doesn't act efficiently on leptospira in kidney. So if it is affecting your kidney and it is causing renal failure, renal failure, it's a kind of difficult for your own immune system to go against them, right? So in those cases, the only way to treat this infection is taking antibiotics. Otherwise, it won't help. Okay, so they can easily multiply in patient's kidney and excrete through urine. That's why, remember, that's why we have seen in most of the case, the infection usually start with the urinal discharge urinal discharge we start with urinal discharge right because uh, in, in, if they are infecting a kidney of human or else other kind of animal like a rat or like other uh, like rodents other rodents and other uh, cattle so in those case if they are infecting kidney uh, there is no way of get rid of them in those case right so they can be easily uh, Released by renal discharge. Now, finally, about the treatment and prevention. Now, the treatment is obvious for using penicillin. Otherwise, you can treat them if it is renal infection, if it is hemorrhagic kind of infections, you should treat it fast using penicillin. You can also use tetracycline and streptomycin in this case, and also you can use erythromycin. Right now, erythromycin is required in large enough doses early in the infection. But after that, you, you, you can stop erythromycin and can start taking penicillin G or tetracycline or streptomycin to cure this kind of infection. Now, obviously, prevention is better than cure. So, you, you should be careful about uh, handling all those food, handling, uh, and if you are having wound, you should uh, clearly uh, uh, wash them daily and obviously, you should uh, cover it cover it up so that you shouldn't get this kind of infections and obviously you need to have a rodent control and vaccination of domestic animals are also very very important in this case right so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you